Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to do problem on a truss. I'm going to show you guys the fastest method that you can use to solve all the force members on a given truss. Now, if you're here for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we're giving a truss and we need to calculate the force in each member. Now the method I'm about to show you is going to be a little bit tricky at first understanding it, but once you start getting it, you are going to have so much fun with trusses and you're going to start calculating them under a minute or two. Now let me walk you through what we're going to do here. First we're going to calculate the reactions, then we're going to identify the forces on the joints, and then we're going to calculate the forces on the members and identify if it's in tension or compression. So let's start solving the reactions first. Here we have a pin and here we have a roller. So a pin usually have two reactions, right? X and Y components. The roller has only one component, which is Y. So let me draw it here. So we have AY and this is AX and this is the direction that I'm choosing. So if I get a negative answer, that means I have to switch my direction. Okay, and then this is BY. So let's take the moment at A is equal to zero. I'm gonna pick this as my positive direction, counterclockwise. Now, if I take the moment at A, I'm going to have 35 times BY, and this is positive because my moment is going this way. I have my reaction going up, so it's in the same direction, and this is my moment arm. It's this distance where I'm taking the moment to where the reaction is. It's the horizontal distance. So that's 35 BY. Then I have 28 going again the same direction. My moment is going this way and I have 28 going this way. So that's going to be plus 28, this is kips, times 20 feet, that's the distance. This is your moment arm from the reaction to the moment where you're taking the moment, which is at A. And then we have 42. So 42 is going to be negative because I'm taking my moment this way and I have 42 going down. So minus 42 kips and the moment arm is going to be 20 because this is where 42 is applied and this is the moment arm from this distance here to A. So that's 20 feet. And this whole equation must be equal to zero so that we reach equilibrium. So I have BY is equal to eight kips. And because this is positive, so by is going to be going up because the, if this number came out negative, then I have to switch the sign down for by. Okay, now let's do the summation of the forces on the y equals to zero. Now I'm going to select upwards to be positive. You could choose either way, but whatever you pick, just stick to it to the end, or you're going to mess up uh, the whole signs and you're gonna get the wrong answer. So let's do AY plus BY minus 42, because 42 is going down. And this is equal to zero. So I have AY is equal to 42 minus eight. So this is going to be 34 kips. And again, because it's positive, that means I'm going to keep it the way I had it to begin with. Okay, last uh, equilibrium equation we have is the summation of the forces on the x equals to zero. Again, I'm going to select this to be positive. So I, I have ax, right? ax is going this way. And then I have minus 28 because it's going the opposite direction. So equal to zero, so AX is going to be 28, and because it's positive, that means the sign that we picked is correct. Step two, we're going to calculate the forces on the joints. So this method, it's like the method of joints, but except I do it mentally, but my professor actually taught me to use this method. So here's the three step things that you need to keep in mind. So the first thing is equilibrium. So your forces has to always reach equilibrium. Whenever you do the addition, always have to be equal to zero because this is statics, it's not dynamics. We don't want things to be moving. So everything that we sum up has to equal to zero. That's one. 
The second thing is, keep in mind that whenever you have a diagonal, diagonal force, it has two components. It has the X and the Y components. So make sure you keep that in mind. And when you have a member, it has a joint here, joint here. So you're going to have two forces coming down so that they can reach your equilibrium, right? And so we're going to have, we're going to have two of those uh, components. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Now, the last thing I want you to keep in mind is when we draw these arrows, they always have to be head to head, which means this way, either you do it this way or tail to tail. Now, you cannot have it um, head to tail. That wouldn't work. So that's going to mess up your whole system. So let's start now solving. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this joint here, A. So at this joint, what do I have? So this component, let's break down this component. So I have this component going up and then I'm going to have a component this way. Now, I don't know the arrow yet. So the way you identify the arrow, it's by reaching equilibrium. So let's back up a little bit. So here I have the X component and Y component, right? Now this member, I have the only X component, right? So here I have two unknowns for the x component and only one known so that's not going to really help me much right now but what i can do though is use this reaction and solve for this y component because if you do the summation of the forces on the y you're just going to have a y minus f a d on the y direction equals to zero hence a y is equal to f a d y right now i have a y is going up for me to reach equilibrium here, I have to have FADY going down. So this is going to go down and this is going to be 34 kips. I hope this makes sense. It is a little bit tricky, but just bear with me. I promise you it is worth it once you start getting it. So now I have 34 going down. Now I reach equilibrium on my Y component. Now to calculate the X, it's actually really easy. So what you do is, we're going to use the triangular method. So I have 34, and I'm trying to calculate for this. So what you do, we're going to multiply it by 20 feet, and you're going to divide it by 20 feet, which gives you 34, because they're 20 over 20, it's just one. So this component here is going to be 34. But remember why I chose this arrow right here, because this we we said head to head so you can have head to tail so you have to have it this way okay guys so now let's look at the x component now i have 34 going this way and i have ax going this way which is 28 so i don't really have equilibrium yet so i need those forces to be equal to zero so what we need to do is add a six kips going this way if you do 34 minus 28 that gives you six so if I add six skips going this way, now I have equilibrium because 28 plus six is 34. I have 34 going this way, 34 is going this way. Equilibrium is reached. Note guys here that we're calculating the forces on the joints. That means I have I need to find FAC and I need to find now FCA because at each joint you have a force and you have an action and reaction and you have to reach equilibrium. So if I have AC going this way, now I'm going to have a force CA going the opposite to reach equilibrium, six skips. Now CB, we're going to do the same thing. I have CB going this way. Now here I have equilibrium reached, right? And then BC, same thing. I'm going to have BC going this way. Equilibrium is reached. Okay, guys, so now let's back up a little bit and look at AD. Now, we, we determined the force on the joint AD, but we haven't determined the force FDA, right? Because remember, like you, at each joint, you have to determine the force. So the value is going to be the same. It's just going to be the opposite direction of FAD for us to reach equilibrium. So instead of having it going down, we're going to have 34 going up, and then we have 34 this way. So now at this member, I have equilibrium reached. Okay, now let's look at BD. So BD is actually interesting because we have so many uh, values that we already determined. And so we can use both methods and it would lead us to the same answer. So if we calculate 
if we start with the y direction, then I have by is going up. Now for me to reach equilibrium, I have to have a force going down, which is going to be 8 kips, right? Because I have 8 going up, 8 going down equals to 0, right? And so, and now if you do the triangle method, you're going to have, you're going to do 8 times, um, this time we have 15. So I'm trying to find this one, right? So we're going to do 15 and we're going to divide it by 20. So if you calculate that, you're going to get six skips and which is good. And then we have head to head, six skips. And this is good. That means we have equilibrium. Equilibrium is reached. You can even check it with this. This is like a double check. I have six skips here and this is six skips going that way. Perfect. So I already knew this was going to be six skips, but I just wanted to show you guys. And also it's a good to keep this in mind so you can check if in case you did something wrong. Okay, so now we have eight skips and six skips. Now we have to do DB. This is for BD, now we have to do DB and it's just the same numbers, it's just the opposite direction. It's just exactly what we did here. Now here's another way you can check it too. So you have 34 going up, eight going up. So if you add these two, they're gonna give you 42. Now, if you take 34, you subtract from it 6 because it's going the opposite direction, it gives you 28. Perfect. Your equilibrium is reached. That means CD is 0. But CD, we knew from the beginning it's going to be 0 if you've watched my previous video where I talk about all the zero force members. Now, the reason why this is 0, besides that here we reach equilibrium, is because we have first three members, right? And two of the members are collinear, that means they act on the same line of action. Now the third member is non-collinear, so the third member is going to be zero, which is CD, because it's not acting on the same line of action as CA and CB. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend that you do, and I'll make sure to leave the link somewhere above here so that you can check it out. Uh, it really just defines how to find all the zero force members on a given truss. Okay, guys, so the last step is the force on members. So as I mentioned earlier, these are just the force on the joints. Now, for the force on the members, it's just the sum of these forces. Let me show you guys what that means. So if we look at FAC, that's going to be equal six skips because we just have one component, right? And this is going to be in tension. The reason it's in tension, this is how I usually identify if a member is in tension or compression. So we have a joint, let's say this is joint A, right? And I have this force that's pulling on joint A. So that's in tension. So this is T. Now, if I have same joint and I have the arrow going into the joint, the force is going into the joint, that means it's in compression. So this, it's going to be in compression. So there's this way to identify it. Another way I usually do, which is really fast, especially during the exam, is when I see two arrows bumping, they're going on compression. Usually I just take the opposite of that and that's uh, the force on the member is going to be in tension. So both, methods can work just pick whatever works for you and stick with it okay so for these members with one component it's really easy to identify the force on the member so same thing with fcb it's going to be six skips and it's also going to be in tension because at the joint six the force is pulling away so it's creating tension now fcd we said it's zero now if we look at the last two members that we have which is FAD and FBD so the way we calculate this it's really easy so we have it's like a statics so we have a force and we have this is y this is x so the way you calculate this it's really easy it's like the hypotenuse method so you have x squared plus y squared square root of that and that gives you your vector right your force the magnitude so that's the same thing we're going to do here so i i have fad is equal to the square root of 34 squared plus 28 squared so this is 48 kips and this is going to be in compression because i have the force going this way and i have a force going to this way it's pointing towards the joint so it's creating compression so that this is going to be compression 
Now you do the same thing here. So I have eight squared plus six squared, and that's going to be 10 kips. And then here, again, I have the same thing. It's in compression. So the, the arrow, my force is going towards the joint. Okay, guys, so if you actually understand this method, you are going to start solving the trusses under a minute or two, which is very important for the FE exam, midterm, and finals. And let me know what you think of this method in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. A la prochaine.